hello my name is Adora and you're welcome to my channel if you're just coming across this channel for the first time you're very much welcome on this channel I talk about basically living in the UK life in the UK and all of that and then um, if you have not subscribed to this channel please 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 kindly do the needful press the red subscribe button so that from time to time when I have any new videos in stock you always be the first to know and if you have been following me if you are an old subscriber thank you very much for being there for me thank you very much for joining me thank you very much for watching my videos thank you very much and may the good lord bless you after the break i have something interesting to share with you stay back you welcome back okay and um, this is going to be a very relaxed video just a story time kind of video and i'll be sharing my experience with you on my first day my first um um shift my first experience i had as a healthcare worker and it all started back in 2019 that was the very first time i did i delved into the care industry and for some reasons the thing the major reason why i decided to move into the healthcare sector is because i just see myself as i'm very passionate towards people i'm very um I, I, I like to see when I um, you know like you, you you touch someone's life and you know you have made a difference and the result you get from it is what keeps you going so I thought I'm that kind of person that has those qualities that then um, they need in the healthcare industry so I went in and then I had my very first um, interview job interview in that same 2019 and um, I was told of the training. I was going to have a few days training for the job and it was going to be a paid training and all that. So I went ahead for this training and the training was for about five days. I think five or six days. I'm not very sure, but I think, yeah, about five or six days. So I um, went ahead on this training and this training was comprehensive. Like uh, it wasn't what I was expecting. Honestly, I thought we would just sit in class and they would just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. But I was very, very surprised at the level of practicals we had to do. And they talked so many things from first aid, from every single thing was covered up. And at some point, I was even asking myself, ah, like, it's a lot of teaching. Like, am I, is this, am I, am I, are they training me to become a doctor or what? Like, it was just too comprehensive, but it was enjoyable, it was fun. I learned a lot of things. There were some things I used to take for granted in the past that I never knew what it meant. It was during that training that I got to understand what it was. For example, I remember back then when I was still in Africa, when I see old people, you know, when they get to a certain age and they start talking incoherently, like you don't even understand what they're saying. They're just, it's like they're, they're just yearning, yearning anyhow, like when they say things, it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't make meaning. You know, they're just talking to themselves or sometimes they forget easily. Then, I remember that time, sometimes people used to say, ah, maybe the person has mental issues, the person is a colo, or maybe the person is a witch. You know, there's this way, there's this certain way they look at old people in some some communities. When you get to a certain age, they just look at you like, oh, she's old, maybe she's a witch or that kind of, I don't know. I don't just know where this mentality came from. But it was during the training I discovered that when someone gets to a certain age, old age, and they start to forget things, it's called dementia. I never knew that before. Like, <laughs> I never heard of that in my life. So I was glad that I had a lot of new words and then I knew their meaning. And then that was when I began to appreciate the whole training, the whole course, the whole um, industry in itself for real. So I went ahead and I finished this training after um, about six days and um, I was just so excited and I couldn't just wait to start my first shift and they told me it was going to be a shadow shift, I was going to shadow someone for about two days so that I, um, I will you know, learn the ropes and know exactly where to start from if I'm to be left alone to do the job on my own. Now for the benefit of those who don't know what a shadow shift means, it's 
it's just a shift your first first shift where they will have to pair you with someone who is more experienced in the job so it's that person that will not you know explain what it's all about what and what you should do that would you know like train you like it's like but this time around it's going to be like a kind of a, a more practical training because you'll be working directly with the real a real patient not the dummy patient that we were using during the training so um i finished the training i remember that very day was on a friday and they told me the shadow shift was going to start on monday honestly i couldn't with that weekend i was just like ah, it's friday saturday sunday like that was one of the longest weekends in my life because i couldn't just wait to just you know find myself working as a carer and then monday came early morning it's supposed to be a 12 hour shift um, that early morning, I had already woken up very early mornings at half seven. I was awake, I dressed up, <laughs> I did my hair, I wore my makeup, lipstick, eye pencil, everything, and I was looking so bling bling. <laughs> I wish someone had told me that morning, like, come, where are you going to? So, anyway, I dressed up, <sighs> so partial, and I went to work. On getting to work, I looked around. You know, when I asked, when I came to, when I got to the care home, because it was a care home, when I got to the care home, um, I was taken straight to the particular ward where I was working that day. And when I looked around, for a split second, I just thought I was odd. I knew there was something odd about me. Every single one there was looking so simple. You know, like, there was, I hardly saw anyone with eye lashes, very flashy hairdo, red lipstick and uh, I just excused myself JJ went to the toilet and I looked for wipes and first of all I cleaned off all the lipstick and whatever I had on my face I because I I just knew and I, this is not this is not the right setting for all this makeup so I just wiped up everything anyway and then I came back looking as simple as the others and I felt a bit more comfortable anyway so we went straight to the job and then um, the person I was paired with to explain everything to me is a particular lady from Pol um, Poland, she's Polish. So she, she was very, very, very nice and she tried as much as possible to put me through to work together. And it was when we were attending to the second patient that <coughs> uh, I started asking myself, are you sure this is what you want to do? Because I'm a kind of person that I get irritated easily. Like, there are certain things I don't even want to see. I, not talk of even that. I don't even want to perceive it. It's a place of to even go closer. I don't want to see it. If I even perceive it enough, it can make me puke. And one of them is the excreta of um, chicken. Now, your chicken poo. I hate to see this thing, like it disgusts me so much. If I see es ch chicken excreta, chicken poo, chicken feces anywhere, I can easily vomit there. That's the kind of person I am. It's even that bad that when me, myself, when I'm in the toilet doing number two, sometimes I close my nose. It is me, oh, it's my own nose, it's my own, it's coming out from my own body. But I close my own nose, not to talk of someone else's own. Then here I was doing personal care. <laughs> like if anyone had told me I was going to face that kind of thing like you know doing personal care for someone else ah but anyway um I was kind of confused at that point it just dawned on me that hey, the main job has started oh, you didn't come here to be carrying tray of injection up and down or, or just to be serving tea on biscuits and all that so um, I was working with this lady and she saw that I was a bit uncomfortable. When we were doing personal care, she noticed that I was a bit uncomfortable with the whole thing. And she was trying to explain to me uh, that this is what the job entails, so that I will be seeing more of this, you know, depending on how often the person get, or uh, maybe the resident gets pressed in front of me. So uh, I was like, hey, okay. So we, we walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and throughout. And another thing that got me really, 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 really tired was just the buzzer. Ping, 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 ping. Before you sit down and a room has just pressed the buzzer, you're running over there to go and, you know, attend to them. Before you come back to take a rest, and that person, just like that, at a point I was so tired. And then I now discovered that 
there was uh, they have certain times when they they, they have um, their tea the cup of tea and then you have to make this tea i was very comfortable with that one you know, making cup of tea yeah, and serving biscuits and all that i was comfortable with it but where really challenged the area that really challenged me was the area of personal care even though i was told during the training like you're going to see all this but honestly it, it didn't hit me so hard as much as when I saw it guru guru practical so um we went ahead we walked all day through and me and this girl we, we did she she was really good very hard working and very encouraging because she knew I um, that was my first time so she just kept telling me don't worry don't worry you'll get used to it that that was how she felt when she got into the job and all that so at about to half two, half then two thirty to three. I was already tired. Like my legs were already paining me. My knees, my feet. I was because I hardly sat down for the that was about six hour shift. I hardly sat down. We were on our feet all day, walking up and down from one room to the other. And one of the things that made the job even a bit more difficult then was because somehow I don't know what happened, but this particular care home was kind of lacking staff. So the few staff they had there like had to overwork themselves. So we were just walking up and down, walking, walking, walking. Then at about um, half two, I was supposed to go for my break. At the same time, the buzzer was just going off and on, off and on, all the rooms and, you know, this lady was like, Dora, you just have to go for your break because if you don't go for your break, you might not be able to go for your break later. If, you know, this buzzer just keeps going off. So just go, I'll cover you. So um, I went for my break and then I went for a half, um, 30 minutes break. Immediately I sat down to rest. It was just like, like, I felt so cool. I felt so revived. I felt so refreshed. I felt so like, you know, when you are just so weak and tired and all of a sudden strength comes into you. That was how I felt when I sat down because I have not sat down all morning. I was weak. I was tired. So it was when I sat down that I actually started to ask myself, are you sure this is what you want to do? Like, can you cope? Can you cope? This looks stressful. Can you really do this? And I was just there. And all of a sudden, I checked my wristwatch again. It was already time up. I had to start running back to go and complete my second shift. Uh, the second shift for the day. Which was, it was supposed to be um, a 12-hour shift. So I went back. And we continued, we, you know, we walked all through that day, we fed them, gave them lunch, cleaning and all the rest of that and when it was half seven in the evening, I was just, I kept looking at my wristwatch all through, looking at my wristwatch, I couldn't just wait for eight, I was just in a hurry to leave, just in a hurry to leave. In a, immediately it was eight o'clock, I just packed my things and I went home. So when I got home, I was like, you know what? So immediately I got home, I just rested, had a shower, and then I went straight to bed. And I was just looking at the ceiling and I was asking myself, like, can you really cope? Can you really cope? This is so exhausting. Uh, it was so, uh, it, it, apart from even the stress of standing and all that, all the things I saw, you know, this, this, the personal care aspect, seeing people vomit in front of you, having to do all that cleaning, and then seeing people, because I'm a very emotional person. Something happened that very day that even kind of, um, it hit me so hard that I had to ask myself, come, come. I've heard about this several, but like for it to happen on my shift, for it to happen in my presence, for it to happen on my first day, it was really discouraging. Actually, that day when I went to work, I, um, there was this particular room I kept passing because each time the buzzer goes off and on, you have to run to the rooms to attend to them. So there was this particular room I passed and each time I pass through this room, I pass in front of this, this room, I always feel like I have these goosebumps all over me and I didn't understand what it was. So I noticed it three times, each time I passed you know, in front of this room to any of the rooms we were to attend to, I feel like they have these cold showers just run over my body like that. So it was later when I was asking the Polish lady. I, I, I just explained to her that I don't know, there's something, I feel so strange, I, I feel a bit tired, I feel a bit sick, that whenever I, I, I sit here, I stay around here, I feel much better, but when I, so I was going to explain to her that each time I pass through that particular door, in front of that door, I feel, I feel funny, you know, when we're talking during our second break, so we're just talking, she was like, oh, that, that particular door, John used to stay there, so I was like, who? 
She said, oh, okay, there was a gentleman that used to stay there. He just passed on this morning. So I said, okay, passed on. Where did he go to? I didn't understand the thing. I said, where did he go to? She said, he's left. I said, okay, oh, you mean he's gone back home? Maybe they've discharged him. She said, no, he just died this morning. Ah. He died. And you're just saying it so, like that, so carelessly, like, <laughs> like it was a chicken that died. He just died this morning. And actually, she was just like, yeah, he just died this morning. He just passed on. Yeah, that's like that. They do it all the time and they just go. And, and I was like, God. So I actually passed, I actually walked past in front of the door of a dead person. As in, someone died in that room. And I walked in front of that room. I walked past that door. Like it was, at that point, it was... I was beginning to feel a bit uncomfortable like yeah i know i've heard the stories that you know people die at that age that they can die easily maybe if they're in hospital or in the care home but like for some reason i wasn't just expecting that <laughs> me i would experience that kind of a thing so when i got to that night those were all the things that were playing in my head i was asking myself come hey, am i sure i can cope am i sure i can you know i was just so i just said you know what i'm not doing it again I'm hard so I don't think this care industry thing is, is for me, it's not going to work because that day I was so discouraged with the kind of things I saw and I was like, you know, enough, let me just leave it. So then I was supposed to have another shift the next day, the very next day. So the next morning, I just called the agency to say, you know, I'm sorry, I won't be able to cover the shift today, I'm really sorry about that. And they asked me, is there any problem, are you okay? I said, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm not just feeling too well. And so the lady I spoke with, she said, okay, because it's your first time, so we understand. You know, just put yourself together. When you feel you are okay to get back to work, you call us, let us know. I said, fine. But within me, I said, no, I'm not going back there. So I didn't work. I forgot about it. And for about a week. And then one day, I just, I don't know what happened. I just said to myself, ah, it's not human beings that are still working there. People that are working there, do they have seven heads? Why don't you just give it a try? You know, like you get used to it. I understand nothing in life comes easy. Making this money safe is not easy. There are a lot of things people do um, and that are even worse than what I am, you know, worse than the care thing, worse than being a carer, worse than this whole thing I have complained about. And they are still managing one way or the other. So just put yourself together and see. Try it again. And I said to myself, try it again. Just give yourself a second chance try it for like about a month and if you're not still comfortable with that then you can quit for good so i just that was after a week of the first shift i had and then i just like you know said okay fine let me give myself one more month and see how it goes if i'm not comfortable with it and uh, then i will just know yes it is not my own and i'll just close the door on that particular aspect so um i went i called the agency and i went back to work again when they gave me a shift and this time around i went to a lovely home and then it's like god wanted to compensate me for the bad experience i had in my first shift this time around it was very very nice it was very easy it was very relaxing there was not much stress of walking up and down and all that now i'm not saying you will always have this enjoyment every time it's not every time you just go and you relax and not do anything or you do less no there are times when it gets very busy every day is different so but after the second shift i had that i enjoyed I kept picking more shifts and more shifts. But what I did this time, the method I used this time for me to get used to it, I wasn't picking long day shifts. I wasn't taking that 12 hours, 14 hour shift again. I started doing it like, <clears throat> sorry, I started taking like half, half day, six hours, six hours. Every, every, every shift I pick, I make sure it's six hours. So I didn't want to burn myself out easily so that I would not be so tired not to come to work the next day or I won't get home and I'm useless. So I decided, okay, each time I take a shift, I take like six hours and then I walk. Before you know it, six hours is gone. I'm home. And it's like, I didn't even go to work. So that was how I was able to, you know, um, get accustomed to the job. And then gradually, gradually, I started get taking 12 hours. And at some point, I even take 14 hour shifts. There are some places, there are some times I walk from 8 to 10 in the night, 14 hour shifts. And it's like... And because you're already used to it now, you're not really feeling it at all. So somehow that was how I got used to it. That was how I just like, I don't know, the whole bad experience I had the first time just disappeared like 
nothing ever happened and um, it's a lovely job it's for people that actually have the passion for it if you are not the kind of person that has the desire or the passion or you feel affection towards people i think you're going to struggle because in this job you will meet all manner of people when i mean <laughs> all manner your faith will be tested your patience will be tested your tolerance will be tested everything about you will be tested and that is when it will now dawn on you that man it's not just you it's not just your type of person that is in this world there are different kind of people out there that you have not met so it's just my own story my own experience on what i saw when i got into the care industry for the very very first time thank you very much for joining me if you have not subscribed to my channel what are you waiting for please 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 kindly press the red subscribe button and i'll bring you more story time next time thank you very much